This is Witchbase News for Friday the 12th of July 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week there's a new rags and riches guide to laser mining as the fifth titan Indra explodes, a coalition of the willing is still trying to recover the missing millions and president elect Felicia Winters is back in the spotlight for this weeks community goal. If you enjoy our videos don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support the channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. Basic laser mining is still far and away one of the most lucrative and safest ways to earn seriously big credits in Elite Dangerous. If you ever wanted to get into laser mining but didn't know where to start or you have questions but are too afraid to ask then fear not Commander. The YouTube channel Mile13Gaming is here for you this week with a fantastic step by step grassroots and up tutorial on how to get started in laser mining, where to find the right rocks to mine, what equipment you'll need and what it all does. The guide starts with outfitting and detailing what the various tools used for laser mining are before moving on to teach in clear and simple terms how to find the right mining hotspot even linking to the perfect external tool to find a hotspot closest to your current location. Then after going through the process of laser mining and how best to utilise your newly purchased mining ship the video explains the route you could take to mine for more and more credits once you've outgrown your first mining ship. Which by the way you'll do very quickly. It's a money hose. There are of course other money hoses in Elite but for the newer player mining is absolutely right up there. To get started you'll find the video by Mile13Gaming linked in the description below. The Thargoid War rumbled on through the closing stages of its final chapter this week. It more than likely wouldn't have escaped your notice that, following a huge community effort, the latest titan to absorb the ire of the bubbles anti Xeno commanders gasped its last late on Tuesday evening UTC. The remnants of the spectacularly bright explosion from Indra can, as with the previous four titans, still be seen in system as can the highly caustic cloud surrounding the still burning nuclear fire in the centre. A brief look at the Thargoid war map filter in game would seem to indicate however that Indra is still refusing to be pigeonholed by our puny human definitions of its moral state despite all evidence to the contrary clearly indicating that it is indeed destroyed. Just as a matter of public record let me state here and now both Rini and I were there when it happened as were a good many other commanders in just our instance alone and I'm happy to confirm that Indra is indeed destroyed, dead, passed on, it is no more, it is bereft of life, it is an X titan. Just to underline that off the back of considerable community effort Indra has been successfully unalived. In all the hubbub and noise of launching thousands of nanite laced torpedoes it is often forgotten that the titans, including those still yet to be extinguished, contain within their goopy caustic interior millions upon millions of abducted human victims held within bio storage pods very specifically designed to keep them, as best we can determine, safe and very much alive. It is likewise often forgotten in these end times that the equipment and the knowledge exists to rescue these unfortunate souls. So forgotten is the plight of the abductees that the individuals concerned have been referred to collectively on Galnet as the missing. Rather embarrassingly a better name might perhaps be the actually just over there but slightly awkwardly out of reach. Whatever the case the missing haven't been entirely forgotten as the anti Thargoid war machine rolls relentlessly forward. There are those commanders participating in the war effort that have dedicated their personal input towards war progress into rescuing as many of the missing as they can from the belly of the beast before they go boom. 
As just one example there is a coalition of some 22 separate player squadrons who call themselves Re-Aegis. When the ability to rescue humans from Thargoid Titans became available during the last days of the Titan Taranis the coalition Re-Aegis began extracting as many biopods as they could in a combined effort called Operation Thunderstruck. As every Titan has come under attack and by association the individuals inside have been placed in ever increasing mortal danger Re-Aegis have increased their number and their efforts rescuing more and more abductees during each Titans final days. The efforts of the Re-Aegis coalition have been tracked by the coalitions leader Commander Lady Lucida and formulated into a very neat statistical breakdown that is publicly viewable. At the time of recording the Re-Aegis coalition have rescued no less than 107,910 bio storage pods from the gooey clutches of the vile void vegetables and the number of rescues from each titan has increased as more commanders have gotten on board and more titans have fallen. Re-Aegis managed to extract over 30,000 abductees from Indra alone before the beast went pop on Tuesday. Congratulations to everyone involved and our thanks to Commander Lady Lucida for tracking and recording the efforts of the coalition. To view the numbers yourself you'll find a link to the very cool Tableau dashboard she's created below as well as a forum post about the effort. You'd be forgiven for forgetting that there was a presidential election in the federation late last year. Not only was the election a relatively long time ago now, October 3309 in fact, but the then incumbent president Zachary oh my don't I look hilariously like Robert Patrick playing the T1000 in Terminator 2 Hudson is still the incumbent president. Just in case you missed the memo the winner of the election was the slightly more moderate in tone Felicia Winters. Of course saying Felicia Winters is more moderate than Zachary Hudson is on a par with saying ice cream is marginally more appealing than a bowl of worms. It's worth reiterating here that Witch Space News endorses neither candidate and does, as you'd expect, intend to remain completely unbiased and impartial when it comes to the political back and forths of the superpowers. Power crazed sociopath Zachary I read your email Hudson was supposed to stand aside at the start of this year allowing Miss Winters to take up residence in the White House on Mars. Just before the handover Felicia Winters home planet of Rhea 3 suffered a devastating series of continent wide tectonic quakes that whilst destroying towns and cities across the affected area also caused a series of massive tsunamis that ensured the destruction wasn't limited to just one continent as the resultant mega waves hit coastal settlements across the planet. As you'd expect Felicia Winters rushed home to help her family and to coordinate rescue, aid and recovery efforts and the presidential handover of power was significantly delayed as a result. There is no power vacuum at the top of the federation however as Zachary I definitely don't own an orbital quake machine Hudson bravely stepped into the breach to steer the ship during Felicia Winters entirely accidental extended absence. Fast forward to this week the handover of power is finally expected to happen in September when Powerplay 2.0 arrives in the game but before then the star system of Rhea has finally reached out for some external aid and a community goal started on Thursday to deliver much needed titanium, aluminium and power generators to an orbital starport above the recovering planet. The community goal serves the dual purpose of offering a timely reminder that not only did the election happen but also what precisely caused Felicia's absence as the last couple of months get tucked away before her portrait inevitably replaces that of the outgoing Dr Evil as part of Powerplay 2.0. As well as offering the usual financial rewards for selling goods to the host station and for participation in the goal, should the goal reach its upper tiers there are also two bonus in-game items on offer to the participants. 
Should the goal reach tier 4 every participant will receive a vibrant orange paint job for the Scarab SRV. However should the goal reach tier 5 then the top 50% of participants will receive a currently unpurchasable size 6 corrosive resistant cargo rack that comes with a massive 64 units of total available capacity. It's no small feat. At the time of recording there are over 1100 participants who have delivered just shy of 6 million units of the 50 million unit goal ...that's 50 million to top out tier 6 anyway. To participate yourself and at the very least secure yourself an SRV paint job head to the rear system, sign up at ITO Orbital and then start delivering titanium, aluminium and power generators. Unless it tops out before the goal will end with the server tick next Thursday. Will you be taking up laser mining for the first time? Have you tried rescuing the missing from a Thargoid Titan and are you participating in this weeks community goal? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.